How's it going everyone? Titanhawk here and today we are going to create our boost meter component for our spectated player. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go here into our player boost meter folder that we created in our previous video and we are going to create our styled components folder, or excuse me, our styled components file. So we're going to call this player boost meter dot style dot ts. We're going to import styled components and then here so inside here we're going to need to create three different components so the first one that we're going to create export cons is going to be our boost meter ring and this is going to be a uh, styled dot circle we are going to then create a boost meter uh, inner circle, which is also going to be of a uh, style.circle. And lastly, we are going to create our boost meter text to display the boost amount that um, the player currently has. And this will be of a text uh, property here. So um, now that we have these, we can start filling these in with some properties. Now you can mostly customize these to your liking, but for this tutorial, we're only going to be customizing a couple of them here. So the first one we're going to customize is the boost meter ring. With style components, we can have this take props as well. So in, how we do that is we just do the angle brackets followed by curly braces. And inside here, we can declare the props or the parameters that this component can take. So for, oops, for this uh, boost meter ring, we're going to have it take in a dash offset of type number. So what this is going to be, you'll, as you'll see later on, this is going to be the how far along the outside of the ring do we want to have the circle filled in. That way, when we are indicating boost, the circle will be completely filled if there is if the player is at a full boost and we will have it be at 75 if there is only three quarters of the boost tank filled and so on. So once we have that in here, then we just need to say our stroke dash offset oops, is going to be equivalent to, and this is how we're going to access our props, is we're going to say props arrow props dot dash offset. And then we just include our semicolon here at the end. Then for the boost meter inner circle, I'm not going to touch this, but if you want to add some custom styling to it where you can have a background image, the color, anything you want with it, you can go ahead and fill it in there. The only thing I will modify here is the text as we're going to need to see it. So we're going to make this in black and white in this tutorial, but again, you can completely customize this with, pro with custom styling as you see fit for your overlay. So inside here, we're going to set the font family to Arial. We're going to set the font size. We're going to set this to 70 pixels. And then we're going to set a text shadow. That way we can see the text really pop. We're going to do one pixel, one pixel, 10 pixels. And then we're going to do all black and with a slight decrease in the opacity. So we'll do, um, actually we'll do a, we'll do a gray. That way we can see it, that way you can see where this property is. We won't do black, we'll do a gray. And then the last thing we're going to do is we just need to make sure that this component is always visible. So we will set the Z index to five. And believe it or not, this is all we really need for our, our style of components here. And now we're ready to start putting everything together. So now I'm going to create the file to actually render our component, put everything together. So we're going to go here, do player boost meter .tsx. We're going to export a const, a player boost meter, which is going to take in no props. And is going to return right now nothing, but we're going to change this here in a second. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our player. So if you remember, we can use our use context that we did in our score bug in the previous video. So we can do const, we can do inside here, we can do game info. We say use context. Again, we're going to need to make sure we import that. And then we're going to see, say game info context. 
And then up here, we're just going to need to add import, use context from React. And we hover over this and we should see that we have our game context here. So another thing too, if you remember, we do have a utility function that we created in our games in our services folder and our game service to actually get the spectated player. So what we can go ahead and do is say const spectated, if I can spell spectated player equals game service dot if you see here, we have all of our different utility functions here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we have our get player from target down here. Just took me a second to see that. And then here we have our, we just want to pass in our game info dot players. And then we want to do then for our target, we do game info dot target. So we now just need to make sure that when we're rendering this component, if you hover over this, that spectator player has the possibility of being undefined as sometimes the player can leave mid match and the, the overlay will have a small moment where they won't be able to find a spectator player. So to prevent crashing, we need to make sure we add this in. We can add checking for that when we render the component. But the next thing we need to do is since this is a circle, we're going to render this boost meter as a circle. There is a little bit of math that we have to do. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to compute a normalized radius. So we're going to say const normalize radius. And we're going to say this is equal to uh, this is equal to 150 minus 10 times two. So you might be wondering, where am I getting these numbers exactly? Well, here's how to compute the normalized radius. It is going to be your inner radius. So the inside the inner circle that is holding that is displaying the boost value that's not part of the sliding ring on the outside, the radius of that circle minus the thickness of the ring that is sliding around the outside multiplied by two. This is going to be your normalized radius. And the reason I have these numbers as spread out as I do is that way you can play around with the sizing of this to fit the overlay that you are making exactly. I found these to be reasonably and appropriately sized for an overlay. That way it's not too small, it's not too big, and that's the way it's super easy for all screen sizes to be able to read. So the next thing we need before we start putting together all of our components is we need to get our circumference, which we can quickly compute from just saying, this is just like what you learn in mathematics. The circumference of a circle is equal to the normalized radius times two times math.py. And just like this, we now have everything we need to start rendering our, our boost meter. Now that we can start rendering, there's one more thing we wanna do when we add this return statement here. We can do return. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that spectated player is actually defined. So we can go ahead and do and create an outer component. And then inside this component, we can use conditional rendering. So we can say spectated player and we put our parentheses and here inside here is where we can start creating our component. This essentially is just going to check to make sure spectated player is actually defined and we can just extract data from it. So the way we're going to do this is on the outside, we're going to start with an SVG component. That way we can make sure that this is rendered appropriately for it being a circle object. So with this SVG, we're going to want to make sure we pass in a height, which is going to be 150 times two and a width that is also going to be 150 times two. So the SVG is going to be a square ob is, is going to be a square. So again, you're seeing that 150 value appear here. That's essentially our inner radius again. And then it's multiplied by two because the radius is essentially going to be halfway across the square. The same thing with the width, it's going to be halfway across the square. So we just need to make sure we multiply these by two and it'll create the square big enough for exactly what we need. So then the next thing we can go ahead and do is we just need to render all of our stuff inside here. So the hierarchy for this for these components is going to be as follows. So first we're going to start with the we're going to start with the boost meter ring. And we'll come back and fill in these properties here in a second. So then it'll be the boost meter ring followed by the boost meter inner circle followed by the boost meter text. So here actually we're going to fill in our, our text right away. We're going to pass in. It's going to be the spectated player dot boost. 
because we know already that this is at this point if we are rendering this component spectator player is defined so we can now begin adding in our other properties here to these other components so it's first starting with the ring the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to set a stroke and this is going to be the color that we want <clears throat> excuse me that the color that we want this to be so this for this video we're just going to do we're just going to do black all zeros for the hex you can see here it shows up here for our color picker so then that's good there then the next thing we can go ahead and add in is going to be just quickly double check to make sure we have all the right properties so we have our stroke then we're going to have our stroke dash array now this is going to what you're going to have to do to pass in with this one is it's going to need to be our uh, we're going to need to use the syntax where we can pass in variables into the string so it'll be the ticks right here if where you don't want to know if you want to know where this is on the keyboard it's right by the number the one key it's just to the left of that we're going to do that and then it's going to be inside here it's going to be circumference and then circumference again this was going to be our dash array so now the next thing we can go ahead and do is we can say in our um we can pass in that dash offset so if we had your dollar sign here you see that dash offset shows up right away and this is again how far along the outside of the ring we want to have the circle or have the ring be now if you remember we have our good our good boost service here where we have something saying get boost bar circumference so here what we can do is we can say hey the boost amount that we have is going to be the spectator player dot boost and then the other thing we need to pass in is the circumference which luckily is just the circumference that we have and there we go that will be passed in through there and then a couple of other properties that we're going to want to set is we're going to want to say the stroke width we're going to want to set this to 10. the um the fill is going to be transparent then we want to do our radius for this r r r this is going to be our normalized radius and then we want to do our cx property which is going to be 150 again this is our inner radius if you want for reference it's just 150 if we change any of these values here with 150 you will need to change all of them to make sure it is consistent in the styling and then we need the same for c of y there and then that should be it for the boost meter ring again you can style this as however you would like but i'm just using this as i found this to be reasonably sized for the overlay so then lastly here is just going to be our inner circle so <clears throat> excuse me what we're going to want to do here is pass in only a couple of properties so our um excuse me our fill for this we're going to make this all white so this will be one two three one two three all f's for there and then we want to do our our property which is going to be and this one's going to be a little bit different this is going to be our normalized radius minus 10 divided by oops divided by two 10 of course being our thickness here if you change the thickness you need to change all the instances of 10 that we see throughout here and then lastly we have our cx which we're going to set to 50 percent and our cy which we are also going to set to 50 percent so that looks all good and now we are ready to test it so here in our overlay.tsx file what i've gone ahead and done is i've commented out our score bug that way we only see our player boost meter so down here for our return we can say player boost meter and that takes in no props so here that's all we need to do i'll go ahead and save and i'll see you in just a few seconds when i'm running the overlay real quick just to jump in here i do apologize for this but i realized i made a couple mistakes when adding this in if you were to try to run the overlay right now you'll see that it will not work the text and everything will be slanted everything will be rotated it just will not be right there's a comedy of errors as i like to say so the first thing that we're going to do 
is we need to add in another styled component here, the boost meter wrapper. We need to wrap this whole thing inside of that component, which will go ahead and take care of a lot of stuff. So what this can go ahead and do is we can have this be positioned in the bottom right. If we want, if not, you can just go ahead and remove this code. I just moved it there to the bottom right. That way you can go ahead and position it there should you need it that way. It's just like the in-game experience. Then the next thing I did is I made sure just to go ahead and take any circle in here and just rotate it negative 90 degrees. That way it looks all correct there. So once you have this, I'll leave this on screen here for a second. That way you can copy and paste it. And then at the bottom here, the boost meter text was missing several other attributes here that just needed to be filled in. So let's go ahead and run the overlay again and let's test, let's test everything out. So this is something real quick that I wanted to mention as well before running the overlay and testing it, is if you run into this uncaught runtime error screen right here, this is okay. So if you see this where it says failed to execute sent on WebSocket, still in connecting state. Essentially, the WebSocket service code that we are trying to run is still in a connecting state, meaning it is not quite ready for us to send anything yet, therefore it crashing. So some, there is a way to do this. There's two ways. One, you can just ignore it by clicking the X. And the other way to do it is instead of running these processes concurrently, you would want to run the WebSocket first and then make sure that has about five or so seconds to run just a little bit more time before we try running our overlay directly connecting to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and you should see a blank white screen to start. I'll be back with you once I get a game going inside of Rocket League. All right, so here we are. I'm currently running the Rocket League game in the background. And as you can see, exactly as we expected, the inside color here will be white and the ring is black with our boost meter value here represented as an eight. You can see it moves down pretty quickly as accordingly. Then we can just go ahead and wait here for a spectated player to change and then it will go ahead and change as well. See, now we can see that a boost pad was picked up. We go ahead and flip over in game here. We are looking at 23, 12 boost. And here we can go ahead and it looks like maybe a goal was just scored because now no one was being spectated. We go ahead and check the game. We can verify that, yep, that's exactly what happened. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. Again, I do apologize for that brief error there right before testing the overlay, but it should all be fixed now. So that about wraps up this video tutorial on making the boost meter component. If you like this video, please be sure to let me down, but let me know by leaving a like in down below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section as well. Also, please be sure to subscribe as it always helps me out and turn on that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any new videos I upload. Until then, my name is Titanhawk17, wishing you a fantastic rest of your day, wherever you may be.